So hi everyone, I'm uh, Pietro Frigo and today I'm going to present uh, our latest work from uh, the Busek group uh, and this was a shared uh, first author paper between me and Enrico. Uh, so what is this project about? Uh, this project is about uh, Spectre and I guess most of you are familiar with this vulnerability but uh, it's a vulnerability that affects uh, most modern CPUs and uh, one of the many reasons why it was considered very interesting from the beginning was that it allowed uh, cross-privilege uh, attacks. So for instance, you could leak uh, from user space uh, uh, kernel uh, data. And because of this, uh, other vendors started releasing all sorts of mitigation to stop this kind of attacks. So for instance, cross-privilege uh, exploits. And among these mitigation, there were two interesting ones, uh, which are uh, Intel EIBRS and ARM CSV2. And uh, with our work, we're trying to answer the question, uh, do this mitigation actually work? And uh, we discovered that actually this mitigation, uh, they're not as comprehensive as they should be. And uh, thanks to this, uh, we managed to show an end-to-end -end, uh, kernel exploit uh, on uh, fully patched systems at the time. So I'm going to start with a quick uh, background uh, about Spectre. And uh, in particular, I'm going to talk about uh, Spectre v2, uh, which is uh, one of the many variants of Spectre. And I'm going to use an example of uh, polymorphism to explain uh, uh, why uh, indirect branch prediction is important. And uh, here we have two classes, uh, and uh, both of them implement a uh, single method, uh, speak. And when you call the speak method from the, cla the cat class, uh, you would expect uh, the function meow to be uh, called, whereas uh, when you call it from the dog class, uh, you would expect uh, woof to be called. And uh, uh, the CPU implements a, a component inside it known as the branch prediction unit, uh, which tries to predict uh, which one of the two uh, functions needs to be executed. And inside the BPU, you have uh, a cache known as the branch target buffer, or uh, BTB, which contains the different targets for this uh, function. But as you can imagine here, the BPU sees uh, one single function call. So how can it distinguish between uh, which of the two uh, targets it needs to execute? And the answer is uh, the tags depends on the context. And uh, what do we mean by that? Uh, with context, we simply mean uh, the history of previously executed uh, functions or jumps, uh, branch con like if conditions or whatever. So for instance, uh, if you're coming from the cat class, uh, you can expect uh, this uh, function to be called from a uh, context like uh, breed cats, uh, um, new cat, uh, and what, what, whatsoever. And this is the context uh, that uh, gets used to compute uh, the tag in the BTB. So when you're coming from this specific context, uh, you can see that it becomes very clear uh, which one you want to speculate on, because from the dog class, it would go from a, a different context. And as a result, uh, the BPU is able to speculate uh, on the correct target, uh, and uh, this makes the execution much faster instead of uh, waiting uh, to fetch the, the actual uh, uh, function uh, at runtime. Uh, so what's the problem with this? Uh, from an attacker perspective, uh, you can exploit this uh, because the BPU and the BTB are uh, shared resources uh, on the CPU core. So an attacker, uh, what, can, what can an attacker do is uh, to simply overwrite uh, one of the entries in the BTB. And with overwriting, which simply means generate another entry with the same tag. And uh, what they can, for instance, do is uh, overwrite it with a more interesting uh, function, like a leak secret function. And this function would rely on uh, some sort of micro uh, traces, like a cache attack, uh, to leak data afterwards. So now what happens is, uh, uh, when the cat class calls again the, the speak method, uh, the CPU will start uh, speculating, and it will see that uh, the valid entry for this, uh, um, for this tag is the leak secret function, and so it will speculate to the leak secret function. Now clearly, this happens all in the speculative domain, so eventually it will uh, go back to execute the meow function. But still, this allows an attacker to uh, leak some sensitive data by uh, making some, ex some other uh, um, code execute this function. And the reason why this is interesting is because, uh, uh, as we said, the, there is no concept. Uh, con yeah, it doesn't understand the, um, the context. So uh, you can exploit these attacks between different applications, uh, between user and kernel, and even uh, guest and host. And uh, because of this, uh, um, most uh, major other vendors started working to uh, de deploy some defenses. And in the case of Intel and ARM, they released these two mitigation, EIBRS and CSV2. And the, the idea behind them is uh, that they want to enforce predictor mode isolation directly in hardware. What do we mean by that? Uh, we can look at it uh, as uh, um, extending the BTB with an extra column where uh, you keep track of also of the privilege level of uh, the application. So for instance, in this case, you would have uh, kernel and user tags in the BTB. 
And when you find the jump, uh, uh, for instance, the uh, kernel here, the indirect jump will be able to speculate uh, only on valid uh, kernel targets, uh, so it cannot jump anymore to user-provided targets. And you can look at this as basically as a uh, SMAP in, um, in the speculative domain. So the question I want to ask uh, is, uh, is this evaluation complete? And this is where uh, we introduce our new primitive, uh, branch history injection. So to understand this primitive, uh, we started from an intuition, which is uh, the user history is uh, uh, necessary for accurate kernel prediction. And I'm gonna use this uh, running example of uh, performing a syscall uh, to understand uh, uh, why is that. So when we looked at this, uh, we thought, uh, okay, but uh, if they do a proper uh, isolation between the two domains, uh, every syscall uh, will be very slow when uh, you jump to uh, the kernel. So for instance, in this case, you have uh, the printf uh, function in user space, uh, and this uh, function wants to write a standard out, uh, so it needs to perform a syscall. When you get to uh, kernel space, uh, the only thing you need to do is figure out uh, which syscall handler you want to execute. So in this case, you want to execute a write, but uh, if you want to speculate on this uh, code, uh, and the only context you have available is the kernel uh, context, uh, you can see that the entry point uh, is always exactly the same. Uh, when you jump to the, after you perform the syscall, when you jump to the kernel space, uh, you will always uh, uh, see the same context. And as a result, uh, every uh, jump uh, to the syscall end will mispredict because it's always exactly the same. So our intuition was exactly this. Uh, we need to use the user history uh, to perform uh, proper predictions. So in this case, for a printf, uh, you will be able to speculate to syscall write, uh, get char to Cisco read, uh, and map to mmap. So then for my attacker, uh, how do we uh, uh, test this? Uh, the question I want to ask is, uh, can we control kernel branch prediction uh, with user space history? So we did a very simple experiment uh, where we fixed a specific context uh, in uh, user space, uh, and the context that we said is just uh, a chain of jumps uh, or calls. And then you, we perform a syscall. So for instance, in this case, uh, an mmap. And after a couple of uh, rounds of training, uh, this will uh, speculate to sysmmap. But then uh, what we do is uh, simply switch up uh, the, the last syscall, just the syscall number actually, from a syscall mmap to uh, a write. But we keep the same context in user space. And based on our intuition, we'd expect this to speculate to mmap again. And indeed, this is what we observed. Because of the fact that we just mentioned, uh, the BPU will think, uh, I've already seen this user history, so I should speculate to mmap. And uh, we tested this uh, on uh, most Intel and uh, ARM uh, modern CPUs that uh, deployed this mitigation, uh, EBRS and CSV2. And we figured that uh, it worked on uh, all the ones we tested. And uh, basically, the, uh, what we observe here is that uh, uh, user context can be used to mistrain kernel and direct branches, uh, even in the presence of these new hardware mitigations. But not only that, uh, we took it one step further and we thought, uh, uh, can we use this uh, in a better way for uh, exploitation? So can we speculate to more interesting targets? So what we did here, uh, we went back to uh, uh, our experiment uh, and uh, we thought, okay, we want to have an interested target. So in the kernel, where we want to have a leak gadget function in this case. And, uh, and this leak gadget function uh, is not one of the valid targets of the syscall table handler, right? And what we want to do is uh, by simply shuffling around uh, the history in user space, so we just generate random uh, jump chains uh, in user space, uh, can we make the syscall table uh, uh, indirect jump uh, jump to this leak gadget? So we simply randomize this uh, uh, jump history in uh, user space, uh, and we figure that uh, by just brute forcing this uh, jump history, we can actually make the uh, syscall table handler indirect jump uh, jump to the leak gadget uh, function. And uh, basically, uh, what we observe here is that we can speculate uh, uh, to any kernel indirect branch target, uh, regardless of uh, what is the indirect jump we're uh, attacking. This is only working on Intel, but uh, still, this is quite interesting uh, for uh, exploitation. And indeed, uh, this was uh, the question that came afterwards. Uh, is this enough to build an exploit? And uh, so we built one. We built uh, an end-to-end -end, uh, kernel exploit uh, on fully patched system, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, but unfortunately, I don't really have time to discuss about the details of the exploit. Uh, but yeah, we have a, a fully working uh, exploit that leaks uh, arbitrary kernel memory. So afterwards, uh, we disclose this clearly, and uh, uh, both Intel and ARM confirm our findings, uh, and uh, they told us uh, Intel uh, confirmed that uh, every CPU since 10 gen uh, is affected, uh, and ARM said that most Cortex-A, Cortex-X, uh, and even the real-time ones are affected. And they clearly released uh, some mitigations, uh, and the main one was uh, disable unprivileged eBPF by default, uh, because uh, our exploit uh, relied uh, on eBPF to uh, uh, gadgets and uh, indirect branches. 
And they also worked on some new software and hardware defenses, uh, trying to break uh, our BHI primitive so that you could not anymore inject the user space history into uh, kernel space. So to conclude, uh, uh, with our work, we show that uh, cross-privileged Spectre V2 attacks uh, are still uh, a practical uh, threat. And uh, we also make a case for uh, uh, more work towards the more principled defenses, because we think these are needed uh, for uh, trying to prevent this kind of exploit altogether. On the other hand, we still think that uh, this kind of defenses uh, like uh, EIDRS and CSV2 are uh, uh, fairly useful because they raise the bar for an attacker and building this kind of attacks is becoming much uh, harder than in the past. So I think there is also, uh, yeah, there is uh, some value in working this kind of defense as well. Uh, we have more in the paper. Uh, I didn't have time to cover everything uh, we did clearly. So in the paper we have about, uh, we have some work about BP reverse engineering uh, and how we could avoid that. Uh, uh, all the details about the end-to-end -end exploit uh, and even more about how to find uh, gadgets in the kernel, even though we don't have an exploit with, that, with those. And uh, all the code is available on GitHub uh, for the exploit as well, so you can look it up and uh, try it yourself. Might work and not out of the box, but uh, with some tweaking. But uh, everything is available for uh, you to play with. And uh, yeah, now I'm open for questions. Uh, and uh, thank you for your time. <laughs>